I'm a small town lawyer, um, practicing in the town that I grew up in. So my practice is primarily to help regular people with their legal needs, real estate closings, wills, um, some municipal court work, a little litigation, a lot of answering questions. I got this in the mail, what do I do with it? I like helping people. I like the contact individual to individual. And I like the fact that it's a more of a long-term relationship. I mean, I might not see them all the time, but I'll see them every few years. Whereas with my old practice, you know, you represented somebody totally disjointed from their lives. Sometimes you never even knew who they were, but you would definitely never see them again once it was done. I was married, I've been married for almost 10 years, and, but I've always felt like something was missing, that there was a part of my life that wasn't completely filled yet. And I didn't know what it was. And I think that when I came to Opus Day, as I came to the Evenings of Recollection, as I started going to confession to Father Bob Connor, as I went on retreat up at Arnold Hall, I began slowly to realize this is the piece that's missing. All that I'm doing as they kind of le led me up an inclined plane, so to speak. You know, you, you don't get thrown everything at once. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Um, was making me a better mother, a better wife, a better lawyer, a better person. So um, first I thought, all right, why don't I try being a cooperator? So I did what, what you do to do to become a cooperator, and I did that for a while. And I was going to lunch with another supernumerary, and I said, you know, I really think that I'm called to be a supernumerary. But I don't think it was any, um, you know, big St. Paul moment, you know. It was, a, it was a gradual thing. What grabbed me was the uh, idea of taking the ordinary and making it holy. You know, the quote from Father, from St. Jose Maria about there's, there's something divine hidden in the most ordinary activities. I actually have that written out on a little note next to my workstation. Um, that when I'm typing this letter uh, or I'm making lunch or doing laundry or just sitting there talking to my husband about something that I'm really not particularly interested in but he really likes, that all those things are what are building up the kingdom. That in some unknown way, God is using me and all of those very ordinary, simple things to accomplish his will, and that I just have to cooperate. So that message spoke to me and still speaks to me um, very deeply. Then on the other side, you can do that without becoming a member or even coming to an Opus Dei event. That's a very Catholic message. But for me, it was also the assistance, the community, the praying for each other, helping each other, um, giving suggestions, direction, finding a really good confessor uh, who over time helps you grow, uh, where you feel that you can see where you were lacking before and how you can grow, but in a positive way, not in a, oh, I'm a horrible person, um, but in a, you have so much potential way, showing you where the potential is and how you can get there. And then just to give the norms so that you're going to Mass every day, you're praying in the morning, in the evening, a little bit of scripture. Your wife, mother of three children, a lawyer in a solo practice, how do you find the time? Well, it's amazing how much time you have if you use your time correctly. To me, the norms actually help me do all the other things. In some ways, I liken it to uh, my father had, a heart, had bypass surgery 20 years ago, and part of his routine is to walk three miles every day because it helps build up his heart muscles. If he doesn't walk, he feels it. 
and he will do anything to walk. If it snows, he'll go to the mall or to the gym because if he doesn't do it, it's just not a good day for him. And so for me, that's what the norms are. If I don't do them, then it's just don't feel right. I don't feel like I can get everything done. I have to get done. Things aren't going quite as smoothly. I'm not quite as patient. So they're my exercise, so to speak, to enable me to do all those other things that I have to do. I think that holiness is um, being close to Jesus, um, identifying yourself with what God wants you to do. Um, and I think it is definitely the work of a, a lifetime that you don't uh, arrive there and then coast. <laughs> um, that that is what you're working towards, the goal you're working towards, and, and hopefully you're getting closer and closer and closer. And I, and I have a, just a feeling that God knows um, when you will reach it and that that's when he takes you. You know, that you reach what he's trying to accomplish in you. You know, we're, um, I like that image of the potter and the clay and that he's shaping me and that all the things that I do are shaping me. And at some point, he, as the potter, is going to be happy with the shape. So, and for me, sanctity is, is beatitude, is seeing God. So you don't really have sanctity until you actually go to heaven.